Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video with Halloween just around the corner, we're going to have a look at some of the best horror games available on the Nintendo Switch. Now I made one of these videos a good couple of years ago now and to be honest I put 10 games on that list and that probably equated to about 60 to 70 percent of the horror games that were available in total on the Switch at that time. Things have changed very much so since then. There are a huge amount of horror games on the Switch now and I have done my best to make sure I don't miss anything obvious. If I have done though, please do feel free to put your suggestions in the comments section below. That being said, there's still a huge amount on here with some real heavy hitters. So which games have made the list? Well, let's find out. First up we have a very recent release for the Switch and that's Project Zero Maiden of Black Water. Known as Fatal Frame in North America, this game first appeared on the Wii U back in 2014 and is the fifth mainline game in the Project Zero franchise. Set around the mysterious Mount Hikami and the mass suicides that take place there, you play as three different characters looking to get to the bottom of what's going on. This series is well known for its main gameplay mechanic being the Camera Obscura, a camera that allows you to see the unseen, and you'll be using this to exercise the numerous spirits that are hostile towards you along the way. The controls are a little clunky, but it has such a unique atmosphere, quite different to most other games you'll see on this list, and for that reason alone, it's definitely worth playing through. And then we have Alien Isolation. This is an incredibly impressive port of a game that first came out back in 2014 and is one of the most intense survival horror games I've ever played. Story-wise, this sees you take on the role of Amanda Ripley, daughter of Ellen, the protagonist of course of the Alien movie franchise, and it's set 15 years after the events of the original movie. The flight recorder of the Nostromo, the ship of Ellen Ripley's last known voyage, is found and Amanda is offered a place on the retrieval vessel in order to finally gain some closure. Things go awry of course and there is a heavy emphasis on stealth as you desperately attempt to avoid running into the alien. It does a fantastic job of making this creature as terrifying as it rightfully should be. It does perhaps overuse the alien a little by the end, but this is a minor quibble to what is a brilliant and incredibly scary game. Talking of survival horror, you also have both Outlast 1 and 2 on the Switch. Now I don't scare easily, I love all things horror and always have done, and I have to admit, the first time I played Outlast, which was on the PS4 many years ago, the first 20 minutes of that game gave me feelings of dread that I didn't know were possible from the medium of video games. These are both survival horror games, again with a big emphasis on stealth, with nothing but a camcorder with night vision and limited batteries for company. In the first game you play as a freelance journalist who goes to investigate a psychiatric hospital after receiving an anonymous email regarding inhumane experiments. The Switch version also includes the DLC called Whistleblower which focuses on the fate of the person who sent the email and is equally as gripping. Outlast 2 continues the found footage style but changes the setting to North Arizona and tells the tale of a man looking for his missing wife after their helicopter crashes. Before long he realises that there is a cult located in the local town and their lives are in serious danger. The first one is a bit cheaper and I preferred the more restricted setting of that first game but you can't really go wrong with either. Layers of Fear 1 and 2 are psychological first person horror experiences and both offer fairly unique settings for their respective stories. The first game sees you playing as an artist trying to complete his magnum opus as he makes his way around a Victorian mansion. There's an emphasis on puzzle solving and it's very story driven. Might not be for everyone but playing this in handheld as some of the strange happenings unfold in front of you is certainly a creepy experience. Its sequel changes things up a tad as this time you are an actor situated on an ocean liner as things begin to go very wrong. It still has more of an emphasis on the psychological side of horror, but it does introduce antagonists to run away from this time. Not quite as good in my opinion, but Tony Todd's narration definitely takes it up a notch. Torn up by conflict, ravaged by war, it's
Another very recent release, on the Switch at least, the next one is Dying Light. This has an open world infested with zombies, a night and day cycle, and a really interesting parkour gameplay style allowing for numerous opportunities for free and fluid movement across the map as you look to evade the hordes of enemies. I played a good few hours of this online with Mark the other night and it was just great fun, although there were some issues when we tried to play 4 player with a couple more friends, hopefully this will be patched soon. A much more visceral survival horror game than some of the ones mentioned so far, which makes for some nice variety if you are looking for something to suit your tastes on this list. On to a series that needs no introduction really to anyone with an interest in horror, it's of course the Resident Evil series. Currently on the Switch you have Resident Evil, the HD version of the GameCube remake, Resident Evil 0, Resi 4, 5 and 6, as well as Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. This in itself gives you a good amount of variety as the Resi games mutated, if you'll pardon the pun, over time, so whereas the first game and Zero still use the fixed camera angles, item boxes and limited saves, ramping up the survival horror aspect because of this in my opinion, 4, 5 and 6 became progressively more action based, with 4 moving the series into an over the shoulder camera perspective and losing the zombies in exchange for parasite infected humans. 5 is a guilty pleasure of mine and I can take or leave 6 if I'm perfectly honest, but then you have the Revelations games which are quite different again. Revelations 1 harkens back to the earlier games in the series but updates the mechanics at the same time and Revelations 2 has a brilliant raid mode which you can sink some serious hours into and in some ways it rivals the game's actual story mode. It's a shame we don't have 2 or 3, I take the originals or the remakes, Code Veronica of course is missing and 7 and Village have obviously skipped the Switch 2 but there's definitely a lot to be getting on with in regards to this particular franchise. After Raccoon City, this must be a cakewalk. A bit of a change of pace now as we look at a few horror themed visual novels. We'll start with a couple here that are linked together. This is Spirit Hunter Deathmark and Spirit Hunter NG. These are both fantastic stories based around characters having to discover the grudge of various spirits and then defeat them in order to attempt to remove a curse they themselves have been afflicted with. The stories are gripping and the gameplay mixes things up between the text heavy visual novel sections and what almost equates to a first person dungeon crawler whenever you visit a location. I've played and beat both of these and highly recommend them. Another very good horror visual novel is Raging Loop. I reviewed this one back in the day and links to reviews of any of the games featured in this list will be in the top in comment by the way and this one really captured my interest due to its story. It basically tells the tale of a curse set upon a village and the rituals that the village elders place upon the residents in order to appease the monsters they believe surround their village. This leads to an intriguing story of human sacrifice but there's so much more to it than this. Very text heavy this one, there's little by the way of actual gameplay but the story is brilliant. One I haven't played myself but it is a suggestion from one of our subscribers and Discord regular Cultured Bucket. This is Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Whilst I haven't played it like I said, I do know a fair bit about the premise and it revolves around your character being invited to join the high school literature club. Whilst this doesn't sound like the basis for a horror game, there is a dark side to the story, although I won't go into any more details so as not to spoil anything for those interested. Next we have the Amnesia Collection which brings together Amnesia The Dark Descent, Amnesia Justine and Amnesia A Machine For Pigs. Amnesia released before the Outlasts and the Layers of Fears and established a lot of the gameplay mechanics that those games have used. It's a first person survival horror game where you play as Daniel who must escape the huge castle he finds himself in with no memory of how he got there and only a note he wrote to himself previously to go on. As well as your health you have a sanity meter to manage and being in the dark for too long will have an adverse effect on this meter. Justine was an expansion to the first game and plays a little differently. Here you are tasked with solving a number of puzzles and failure to do so will see an innocent person die. A Machine for Pigs features a new cast of characters and is set in Victorian London. This collection is another one we do have a review of on the channel so do feel free to check it out for more information. 
You have the Little Nightmares games, Little Nightmares 1 and 2 on the Switch, both of which are puzzle platform horror games with some stealth elements to them. These are delightfully twisted and macabre games where you must navigate traps, platforms and avoid huge, beautifully crafted but equally twisted antagonists in these incredibly morose games. The controls for the platforming sections can be quite fiddly and the first game suffers from some pretty bad load times, something that thankfully they did fix for the sequel, but again, they are just so unique when compared to all the other offerings on this list. One of the first big third party games to make its way to the Switch back in the day was Doom, which came out on other systems in 2016. Since then we have seen releases of the original Doom, Doom 2, Doom 3, Doom 64 and Doom Eternal of course, meaning that you are spoilt for choice when it comes to taking down demons in these hellish first person shooters. The originals are incredibly cheap so are a great way to go if you are looking for more of an impulse buy for Halloween and the newer games were both very good ports and well worth picking up. These are much faster paced and gratuitous than some of the other games on this list, especially those glory kills in the newer games, but equally as nightmarish, especially on the harder difficulties which will have you screaming. And a couple I'm going to lump together before we move on to some honourable mentions and these are Dead by Daylight and Friday the 13th. These are both asymmetric online survival horror games where the aim is to either take on the role of the killer and eliminate the other players or be one of those looking to survive the encounter with that killer. Dead by Daylight takes place from a first person perspective and whilst there are a host of known killers from many different franchises such as Michael Myers from Halloween, Pinhead from Hellraiser and Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street, the base game on Switch does not include any of these characters or their chapters and they must be purchased as DLC so just be aware of that. Friday the 13th of course centres around the movie franchise of the same name and takes place in some of the iconic locations from the movies. You are either Jason, again with the various incarnations from different films available, or a camp counsellor looking to escape. The lack of the counsellor mode in single player is a disappointment for me, but I have had a lot of fun with both of these games on the Switch. I don't know how active the online communities for either game are now, so if you do know, please do let us know in the comments section. Now for some honourable mentions before we end and we'll start with some pixel art based games. First is another new release on the Switch, although a new version of a game that's been around for a while and that's Corpse Party. This is an updated version of the original survival horror game and adds hand drawn segments to complement the original top down pixel art graphics. There's been a couple of new chapters and new characters added to this version. Evil Tonight has also made its way to the Switch quite recently and is a very difficult survival horror game which brings some of the tropes of the genre such as scarce supplies and a large building full of enemies to avoid or defeat to the forefront. The lack of a map lets this one down a little for me but if you want to go old school and plot your own map on grid paper or you just have a good sense of direction then you might get further than I've been able to with this one so far. A double pack of classic retro games here, this is Zombies Ain't My Neighbours and Ghoul Patrol. These top down shooters are great fun and play heavily on classic horror pop culture references in terms of their level names and enemy designs. Many consider Zombies Ain't My Neighbours to be the superior game and they're probably right to be fair but Ghoul Patrol was the one I owned as a kid for the Super Nintendo so there is a lot of nostalgia there for me. Savage Halloween is a fun and fairly short pixel based 2D platformer with a few other gameplay styles thrown in to mix things up. There are three different characters to choose from and a number of power ups to find and I quite enjoyed my time with this one when I played through it a few months back. Blasphemous is a hard as nails metroidvania with lovely pixel art and probably falls under the macabre heading in terms of the type of horror it brings. 
To give a movie example, it would be more Hellraiser than Friday the 13th, with a twisted world of pain and sordid pleasure to navigate. Moving on to the last few now, and there's a big game here in Metroid Dread, but it only goes down as an honourable mention on this list because I wouldn't personally class it as horror, although it's hard to deny the feeling of the titular Dread when those Emmy robots are chasing you. This fantastic new entry in Nintendo's Metroid series is one of the games of the year on the Switch so far as far as I'm concerned. Blair Witch is another first person walking simulator and uses the found footage idea that the film which started the franchise is so well known for. You play as a police officer who along with his dog is on the lookout for a missing child in the Black Hills Forest in Burkittsville, Maryland. The game itself is well done although there is an awful lot of popping in the Switch version which does begin to break the immersion. A shame as with Bloober Team behind it, a lot of the mechanics lead to some genuinely creepy moments. Bendy and the Ink Machine is a personal favourite of mine. Another first person game, this sees you play as a retired animator who returns to his previous workplace to find something very sinister at play in regards to the animated characters. The game's biggest strength is its 1930s, 1940s animation style. All of the characters have that early Walt Disney or Fleischer Studios rubber hosing look to them and it's great seeing what started as quite innocent characters becoming so evil as you go along. The combat is quite clunky in this game which does let it down a tad but it's still worth looking into. Zombie Army Trilogy is an intense first person shooter which brings the three games in this series together. They are spin-offs of the Sniper Elite series but with a much larger emphasis on action as you attempt to take down Hitler's zombie army. And finally, a bit of a throwback to the old school 3D platformers of the N64 or the PS1 days. This is Pumpkin Jack. This one is a bit of a blast from the past and reminds me a little bit of a PS2 game actually based on A Nightmare Before Christmas. It's perhaps a little expensive but this is probably a good time to mention that a huge amount of these games are on sale for at least another day or two as of the date of this video going live to tie in with Halloween. So there you have it, a bumper list of horror games. As I said, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some I've missed because there are just so many these days to cover. There are some I didn't miss, such as the Bioshock series. I wasn't comfortable enough classing those as horror, although I do appreciate they're set in a very twisted world. But if there's any you want to suggest at all, please do stick them in the comments section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, happy Halloween and of course, happy gaming.